Okay, now think about DHL Express. What would happen if we created an environment where 13,000 people Samuel Strong constantly understand their single goal during the day is to love the customer, to say yes, to have an over-happy customer. FedEx, UPS. You know, I really believe that the number one reason that most companies in the world do not do anything about customer service other than talk about it is they do not understand that it is the most powerful, strategic, competitive weapon that you will ever begin to use in your lifetime. It has value. It is a high yield investment. It absolutely creates results. So if there's one message I can sell everybody on listening today is go back into your organization. Start looking at this strategically and look for a way to drive it and implement it. Customer satisfaction when you have exceptional service is the most powerful strategic weapon you can use to own and dominate the marketplace. And the reason I say that is you could go out and tell every one of your competitors what you're going to do, why you're going to do it, how much money you're going to spend on it. And they're all going to say, you know, you're really stupid. What do you do? Go to some convention and hear the show guy? I will show you this morning, financially, how money falls from the skies if you absolutely provide incredible service. Now, we're not talking about new planes. We're not talking about new trucks. What we are talking about is taking the 13,000 people that you have in the Americas and creating an atmosphere, Samuel, so when they get up in the morning, they think, cool, this is my day to take care of customers instead of... Damn. You know, wouldn't it be great instead of talking about Disney and Federal Express and General Electric, instead they were talking about Band Aid and they were talking about your dealership. And I don't care if you're in Clearwater or St. Cloud like Roger Dunnock, wouldn't it be great if everybody in those market areas said, you know, there's only one place to do retreading? And that's at Band Egg, and it's at your dealership because you understand the power and the strategy of customer service. I challenge you to put these ideas into action because they work. Thank you very much. Every business strives to get customers in their doors, but according to John Scholl, an internationally recognized expert on customer service, employees often drive them out faster than they come in. But there's good news. Using the strategies of the Multinational Service Quality Institute as inspired by John Scholl, your firm can gain the competitive edge. So joining us now with the secrets of a successful complaint letter is the author of The Customer is Boss, John Scholl. Good morning, John. Good morning. Bad services, bad products all the time. When do you get mad enough or when should you pick up and write a complaint letter? Whenever you're unhappy, for whatever reason, because you're going to do the company a favor by letting them know and you're going to reduce your own blood pressure and by communicating to a company that you're unhappy. Good morning, John. Good morning, Lark. Well, let's talk about service. Where are we in this country? Have we gone from bad to worse? I think we have. Uh, everybody talks about service and if you walked up and down Main Street America, every single business says they're great at it. The problem is it's really difficult to find it. The author of this book, John Scholl, joins us now. Let me ask you, first of all, I think a lot of people say, well, I won't complain. I'll just be quiet and put up with it. How important is it that people actually stand up for their rights and say something when they receive if, bad service? If we want good service, we have to stand up. It's amazing how reactive companies will be if we communicate our concerns and our problems. Right now, mm -hmm. most of us are very quiet. We never see anything. And all these organizations think they're incredibly good. But let's join John Scholl now, has his own company in Bloomington, Minnesota. He's, so is what she just said characteristic of your workers? I, I really disagree with that. A noted author and popular guest expert on countless television programs, John Scholl has addressed audiences throughout the world. His dynamic and interactive platform style inspires audiences to rise to new heights in their focus on true customer service. So fasten your seatbelts as we preview what Time Magazine referred to as a quality service guru, John Scholl. I wouldn't be surprised at DHL Express. You could teach the skills. It's attitude that counts. So let me talk a little bit about empowerment. If you look at Webster's definition as to authorize, enable, permit, to give power and authority to, my definition is that every employee has to be able to make a fast decision on the spot to take care of a customer to the customer's satisfaction. And there, the problem with empowerment 
and this is global, is that most employees are afraid that if they make an empowered decision, what's going to happen? What's the number one fear? The number one fear is they're going to get fired. Huge fear. Now, if you look at the Caribbean and Latin America, most people don't want to lose their job. DHL is a nice company. So if you have a choice between taking care of a customer or losing your job, most people would say, the heck with the customer. So you got to have empowerment. That means that every employee, regardless of their level, has to use a little bit of common sense. And we're not talking about the deal in France where they gave away $7 billion. And what we're talking about is people making quick decisions on the spot. Frankly, and we're going to talk about service recovery, I think if you have empowerment, you, you solve a lot of your problems. And, and I know that I've heard John talk about it, Roger talk about it. Everybody wants empowerment. The difficulty that you got in the task is to make sure that every employee you got makes a fast decision during the day, and it better be in favor of the customer. If you have an over-happy customer, you make a lot of money. A lot of money. That's how you get customer retention. There's two ways to drive empowerment. One is recognition and the other is celebration. Let me tell you what I think happens in, in most countries is that if the person's got a pulse, they're hired. Let me tell you what, I wouldn't be surprised in each of your markets that you have some dead people on the payroll. So if you're going to be more productive, we've got, to, we've got to hire the right people, and then we've got to learn to love them. And then the next step that I'm going to talk about this morning is that we've got to have empowerment. Empowerment, again, means that every one of your employees has to make a very fast decision, and it always has to be in favor of the customer. I don't care if you think the customer is crazy, it's irrelevant. The customer is the customer, and the customer is always right, because your objective is to double your business. Your objective should be to destroy your competition. And the only way to do that is to make sure you got empowerment. What we're talking about today in terms of customer service is a strategy. I believe it's a very strategic, powerful weapon that any organization can use because it allows you to differentiate in the marketplace. In my opinion, it has value in the eyes of the customer. It is something that has a lot of feelings to it, a lot of perception to it. And so today, as you listen to my comments, I'd like you to think about what I'm saying strategically. Don't think of this as two hours of training. Instead, think about this as a tool that I could use in the Defense Department, in the Navy, in my university, in my healthcare operation, in my life insurance company to build market share, to build market dominance. You see, the difficulty, I've been focusing on customer service now for 19 years. And we all talk about customer service, but going through the motions of providing service is one thing. Exceptional, noticeable, unusual service is another thing. And the interesting thing, no matter where I go in the world, everybody says, yeah, we're really pretty good at service. But if you would just take a moment and write down five organizations that you do business with in your personal life or your business life that give you awesome, mind-boggling, incredible customer service consistently. Just write five organizations down as fast as you can. But some of you in the audience right now are probably thinking, five? I, I, I'm having trouble. <laughs> and yet, if you think of the thousands of organizations that we all interface with, why is it so hard for any of us to come up with five? More importantly, after today's session, what would happen? If there was a survey done in your market area, in your industry, and they listed the top five organizations, and your organization was one of those five, it doesn't matter if you're government, or nonprofit, or the private sector, why can't we all be service driven? And that's what today's session about is all about. And I think Mark Jarvis from Oracle, the senior vice president, probably has it right when he said, our view is very simple. It's either e-business or out of business. And when we talk about eat or be eaten, we got to realize that your customers are at risk from wherever you are 
your best customers are right now using the internet and looking for ways to reduce costs, to look for ways to find an organization that is more service driven, that will provide a service that they're looking for. Let me give you another example of a role model, which is Amazon. Number one goal is to be the Earth's most customer-centered company. How many here have ever bought a book from Amazon or a product from Amazon? Okay, a lot of hands went up. Here's the benefit of Amazon. You can order a book. You can order a product from them at midnight. You can be sitting in your home, naked. <laughs> midnight. And you can order a book or a product from Amazon. And then within 60 seconds, you're going to get an email confirmation coming back. The next day, you're going to get a tracking number for where the product was shipped and how it's been shipped. That's called speed. That's called customer service. That's called technology. Now, let me tell you what. If you went to your local bookstore at midnight, naked, <laughs> you may get arrested. That's problem number one. I challenge you to put these ideas into action because they work. Thank you very much.